when it comes to the more creative like harmony you know the stuff that is a bit more outside the box how do you kind of make it work in a way that like you know that that someone will be able to kind of maybe not hum it back but you know what i mean it becomes a memorable part even to someone that maybe isn't so clued in dude that's an absolutely great question and um it's something i can relate to you know when i was younger my dad he's a bass player was massively into jazz and fusion you know he introduced me to like chick Corea, and then you know even like steve vi and frank zappa he wasn't necessarily a fan of vi but you know that was around and so i'd hear those crazy changes. I liked Vi and stuff, but then if he showed me like John Coltrane or, you know, anything that was a bit more avant-garde, I felt exactly the same as you. It was a little bit like, there's nothing for me to latch on to here. Like if I look back at one conversation I had with my dad, it was like a Coltrane DVD or whatever it was back then. And I remember him saying to me, oh, Jack, listen to the lines in this, listen to the creativity. And I, at the time, you know, I was well into, I don't know, like the 80s metal, you know, like Motley Crue and, you know, Racer X, stuff like that. And I was saying to him, oh, dad, it's just a load of randomness. Like, it's just, not, it's not that cool. Like, where's the melody? Where's this? Where's that? I would cringe looking back at that now because that is one of my favorite styles of music. But yeah, I think that's the hard thing when you're writing like fusion and inverted commas, there's a whole argument that what me and Owen are doing is not necessarily fusion either. You've got to have still some kind of melody. And when it comes to writing more complex harmony around things, very often what we'll do is start with really simple harmony on the demo. So something that's maybe diatonic and build the chords around that. So the hook is still the same. If you listen to a band like Dirty Loops, they're one of my favorites, if not favorite, that's what they are very, very good at. Like they'll get the arrangement of say, this is how I imagine they do it. And it's what I've read is they have like the core of the song already there. And it could be quite a simple pop tune initially. But what you do is you look at how can I reharmonize this melody? What chords can I put to accompany this? But the melody is still the core strong, you know, it's the thing which you latch onto. So that I think is really the goal as well, not writing to sound complicated, not trying to, you know, say, look how many chords I can use in this one movement kind of thing. It's not really about that. If you want to do that, you're just going to get what sounds like an exercise. I think you have to have strong melodies or like a strong chordal idea that can repeat, that the listener can hook onto. Even if they don't necessarily understand every chord that's in that progression, it's something that they can hear and go, oh, you know, when you, when you do like the stank face at a gig and you're like, oh, where did that come from? That was a bit naughty. I think that's what we're trying to throw in there. It's like, how can we make a statement that would normally be quite diatonic and nice sound just a little bit fancy with a bit of extra sprinkles on there, you know? 